Hi friends, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. I am here today with a highly requested video, something kind of fun. So if you don't know me, I call myself a nutritionist and I've explained this in other videos. Anyone can call themselves a nutritionist, so don't trust people that do call themselves a nutritionist. I have my degree in nutrition, so at least I have four years of schooling. If you trust anybody with a nutrition opinion, trust dietitians because they got their degree in nutrition and then did a couple additional years of schooling, internships, heart exams, became registered. It's a much more intense process, but I have four years of schooling and I'm here to show you what I eat in an average day. I'm going to be very honest, going to be very open. I'm not going to try to impress you with what I eat. This is legitimately what I eat every day. My breakfast is pretty much the same every day and my lunch, which I will be eating as a dinner, is also pretty much the same every day. I just switch out the vegetables. And then as far as dinners go, I make Brooke and I uh, like a bulk dinner every two to three days that will tie us over for a couple days. And I try to switch that up as much as possible to keep things interesting. With that, here is a realistic what a nutritionist eats every day. Good morning. I look rough in the mornings. Yes, yes, very sleepy. The very first thing I do when I roll out of bed is I grab a cup of coffee. Oh, I like this creamer because there is not a lot of sugar. There is a little bit of added dried cane syrup, but still per serving there's only one gram of sugar. Not super unhealthy and sugary like most coffee creamers. It is coconut based, it's from Trader Joe's, and I know it looks crazy. I have been adding a lot of creamer to my coffee lately because I have recently developed acid reflux. <laughs> so I only have one cup of coffee now and I try to temper it as much as possible with the cream to lower the acidity. Make it a little kinder on my body. I just had my coffee, got work done for a while, and now I'm gonna make breakfast. I have the same thing for breakfast almost every morning. These are from Trader Joe's. That's where I do most all of my grocery shopping. It is the unsweetened instant oatmeal. It's the only certified gluten-free oatmeal that they have. Oats are naturally gluten-free, but for someone with celiacs, they have to be certified gluten-free because sometimes they're lightly dusted in flour or processed on the same equipment as gluten. So I get these. I also do like that they're individually packaged because I know I'm getting the correct amount per serving. It also has whole grain oats, quinoa, amaranth, flax seeds, and chia seeds. And so I will show you how I make it. Is it pretty? No. It actually looks quite disgusting when I make it, but this is me showing you what I actually eat in a day, so it's not gonna be pretty. It's, uh, it's gonna be realistic. This is what the individual packets look like, and obviously put it in the bowl. I add more water than is actually necessary so that it's you know, like runny enough to add my protein powder and stuff later. And I know that all trendy YouTubers do it on the stove top. Like I said, I'm being realistic, so microwave it is. <laughs> you see how it's runnier than like most oatmeal? That's good, I want that because I mix in a lot of stuff. This is what I do on an everyday basis. Some days I'll mix in some other things, especially if I know I'm gonna be out and about all day and I wanna make it even heartier. But I've talked about hemp protein powder on my spring favorites and I mix this in with my oatmeal all the time. It has a ton of protein and fiber. So for a serving of this, it has 15 grams of protein and it has eight grams of fiber. I eyeball everything I do. I usually just get a couple big spoonfuls of this or Oh, wow, that's a huge one. So one big spoonful of that. And I like to make my oatmeal like chocolate, peanut butter, banana flavor. And the main reason I add chocolate is because the color of this is disgusting when you don't add chocolate. So this is just plain cocoa powder. You could use raw cacao too, which I sometimes do. Um, and that has more antioxidants. Then whatever nut butter I have. I have peanut butter right now, so I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of that. I add a couple teaspoons of honey, so I'm gonna add that in, mix it together, and I'll be right back. Sorry if you can hear my neighbors doing their yard. It's LA problems, city living, never good sound. But I got this chocolatey yumminess, and I just add banana coins. I usually don't make it pretty. And that is my everyday breakfast. I will see you at lunch when my neighbors stop doing their yard. And when I look better. This is the day before. Some afternoons when I need a little pick-me-up, I will drink kombucha. My favorite flavors are the lemonade and the cayenne. I just got home from the grocery store and I'm going to start meal prepping. On Mondays, I make all of Brooke's lunches and I also make like a two-day dinner. So I will just briefly show you what I'm doing. My kitchen's a mess. 
My hair is a mess, it's hot when I cook. I also always watch YouTube videos when I cook, but I wanted to show you really quick what I'm doing right now. I was inspired. I bought this cookbook because it's called Healthy-ish, and I never saw it until like probably season two of Pretty Healthy, and I was like, Pretty Healthy, Healthy-ish. Wow, so similar. And I found this recipe where it's like a one pan, uh, like chicken and potato roast. I feel like it's something that Brooke would really like. So I'm kind of playing off of that. And I'm also gonna do some broccolini on the side. Right here I have very finely diced, well you know, fine for, for a potato. Some red potatoes, some onions, there's lemon juice, olive oil, thyme, salt. I have added some umami seasoning. This is from Trader Joe's. I love it. This looks gross, but it is basically a bowl of Earth Balance, which is like the oil-based butter, and uh, Dijon mustard and sea salt. I'm going to just coat each piece of chicken. These are some chicken thighs. Mmm. Y'all, I never ate stuff like this like before I met Rick. And nestle it in the potatoes. Look at that pile of meat. That should hopefully be dinner for Monday and Tuesday night. And bake away. Update as I get sweatier and sweatier. I am also making Brooks lunch, so I'll show you what I'm making him. Over here, I have quinoa and brown rice going because I eat that and then I'm making him like little Mexican protein bowls. So that'll be his base and my base. And then his chicken is going here. And then I'm about to put some tofu in the oven for me. I always just coat it in olive oil, sea salt, whatever spices sound good that week, and I bake it for like 45 minutes at a pretty high temperature until it gets crispy on the outside. Update on Brooks lunches and my uh, mess of a kitchen. This is what I made him. There's brown rice quinoa at the bottom. We have some romaine lettuce, black beans. This chicken, I literally just used Trader Joe's um, taco seasoning on it, pico de gallo. These little guacamoles from Trader Joe's, they're individually packaged, so it's good because they don't go brown until you open them, so I'm just gonna pop those in there too and send that for him at work. This is the pan roast. I added broccolini in near the end, but it was still a little too early. I checked the internal temperature, well above 160, so the chicken is cooked all the way through, totally safe, and my tofu, it's not crispy yet. Is it pretty? No. Is it what I really eat? Yes. So this is the brown rice and quinoa. I mixed in this vegan kale, cashew, and basil pesto. I just pulled out my tofu, it's still sizzling after it cools. I'm gonna add it on this, put it in the fridge, and just keep that and rest of the week. The tofu brown rice quinoa thing you saw me prep, I normally have that for lunch, and then I'll have whatever I made for Brooke and I for dinner. But today, it is currently 12.30. I'm about to leave here at like 1, 1.30 to go to an audition on the west side, and then an audition back in Hollywood, and then to Nanny for the rest of the night until like 11 p.m. So I want to bring dinner with me, and because of that, I'm going to eat the chicken now, because it's poultry. Poultry doesn't do so well at room temperature. Poultry is actually one of the most dangerous foods as far as like food poisoning goes, so I'm very particular about it. So I'm gonna eat that for lunch and then bring my tofu with me for dinner because that I feel much more comfortable taking along with me throughout the day unrefrigerated. Now I'm not too, too hungry for lunch. I just know I'm about to be out of the house for a long time. So I'm gonna eat a little. I'll just do one little piece of chicken, couple small scoops of this potato and onion hash type thing. Currently about, I would say that's a two and a half ounce piece of chicken and about a quarter cup of potatoes. I'm gonna heat that up and then add arugula to it, almost kind of like a warm salad type situation just because, like I said, I'm not that hungry. This is much more calorie dense, uh, but it has some protein from the chicken, which is good. And then I'm gonna fill it out with this arugula because I need to get some grains in today and because that is not very calorically dense. I love how it's just so peppery. With arugula, I always just add a little bit of lemon juice, a pinch of sea salt, and it's not pretty yet again, but at least it's, you know, kind of healthy. I'm gonna start prepping my lunch, which is now my dinner to take along with me for the day, but I wanted to give a little disclaimer about tofu. So there's pros and cons about tofu. Tofu does contain a phytoestrogen, which your body can process as an estrogen, so let me just start by saying nutrition is one of the most under-researched science in the world because it is one of the newest sciences. And so there are some potential cons with consuming too many um, phytoestrogens. If you are genetically predisposed to breast cancer, testicular cancer, some research leads to believe that it could increase the likelihood. But 
you know, kind of unsure. So I just make sure I don't over consume it. I say I have it every day, but I make one block of tofu last me a week. I think as a society, we over consume protein. We really should be focusing more on fiber and then nutrient density than just consuming so much protein. So I only have a few little pieces of tofu in with my meal and I only have it probably four days a week. So it seems like I'm eating a lot of it, but as far as quantity goes, I'm not eating a lot of it. So I try not to over consume soy. I do love tofu. It's just such an affordable protein and it has a lot of fiber in it and it's lean, it's low calorie. So that's why I like it. So with that just claim around the way. Let's prep dinner. This is my very crispy tofu. I'm gonna start with probably about a third a cup of this brown rice quinoa blend. I have more arugula just cause that's what I have in the fridge. I usually try to switch it up a little. I just love arugula. Pardon me using my hands. I promise no one is eating this besides me. I'm gonna do, I guess, four little pieces of tofu, half an avocado. And I'm gonna chop that with a little bit more sea salt because I didn't really season that yet. And it's good to go. Dinner, packed for tonight. So normally it's, um, it's 1.15. Normally between one or two, I will have kind of like a pick-me-up beverage. I was definitely over consuming coffee, a little too dependent. I would always have one in the morning and always have another cup of coffee at two o'clock. As I mentioned earlier, I've kind of been developing acid reflux, so I've been allowing myself to have that one small cup of coffee in the morning, pretty much diluted with something creamy. And then in the afternoon, I will either have a kombucha, a green tea with lemon juice, or a homemade matcha latte. So to take on the road with me to my auditions, I'm going to quickly make a matcha latte, and I will show you how I do that. In here, I just have some plain unsweetened almond milk. I buy these little matcha green tea powder packs from Trader Joe's too. See a trend? I love Trader Joe's. Try to get it all out, because it's not cheap. I add the smallest little splash of vanilla extract. I am running low. I either add cinnamon or sometimes a little bit of this pumpkin spice blend, which is just a blend of spices. Cinnamon, ginger, lemon peel, nutmeg, cloves, cardamom, star anise, fennel, and black pepper. Spices taste great and they also have a lot of nutritional benefits. And then I sweeten it with a little bit of honey. I always have to remind myself not to overconsume honey because I love honey <laughs> so much. So I just try to add a little bit. I like to blend it because it is the easiest way to get some froth, some foam, without having to use like an espresso machine or anything like that. My favorite mug that Brooke got me for my birthday. Go watch my birthday vlog if you have it. Now I'm ready to go conquer the world. By conquer the world, I mean book those auditions because uh, that would be nice to be paid. Thank you so much for watching. I have so much fun hanging out with you guys. If you like videos like this that aren't as much of like a sit down video, but are more like a come along with me video, let me know. I will do more things like this and let me know if you have any, any suggestions that you'd like me to talk about and I will gladly do it. If you wanna keep hanging out with me, please press subscribe. I am so close to 15,000, which has been a big goal of mine. So I would very greatly appreciate it and I will see you next time. Bye.